What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about everything you would need to do to your car to convert it to 85. So just to be clear, I'm not actually converting my Mustang to run on E85 in this video. I'd love to do that because we just got E85 pumps in my area. So I've been doing a ton of research to figure out how I could convert my Mustang to E85. And I'd love to share that information with you guys. There's really three main things when it comes to converting your car to E85. First, well, you need to know what makes E85 different than gasoline. I think that's pretty important. And then two, you need to figure out what you need to do to your fuel system in order to support E85. And then three, you need to figure out what you need to do to your tune or your ECU in order to support E85. So it's really the, only those three things. It's not that complicated, and I'm gonna try to break it down for you in this video to make it a lot simpler to understand. So let's get to it. First, we're gonna go over the benefits of E85. Because E85 burns a lot cleaner in the engine, it creates less emissions and less carbon buildup in the engine. So overall, it's better for the environment and your engine. It runs cooler, which in turn allows you to make more power. It also allows you to increase your ignition timing and usually your boost as well, which means a lot more power from your engine. So that's mainly why a lot of people want to run it because they know they can make more power, especially on turbo applications where you can increase your ignition timing a lot more and your boost a lot more than usual with traditional gasoline. So what's the actual difference between 85 versus gasoline? Obviously, there's a lot of differences like chemically and scientifically, but in regards to converting your car to 85, the only thing you really need to know is that 85 contains 30% more oxygen than gasoline. So why is that important though? Well, because there's only really two main things you need to run your car and that's air and fuel. So if 85 contains oxygen, 85 contains air in it, then that means that your engine characteristics and how you tune it change. Let's talk about the stoichiometric mixture and I promise this is the last scientific term I'll use in this video. I don't want to get too deep into the science. That could be a video on itself. But basically the stoichiometric mixture is the ideal ratio of air to fuel that burns all fuel with no excess air. It's essentially a 100% clean burn. This is not the best mixture for power, but it's the best mixture just for efficiency. So this is what you would use at cruising speeds and at idle. For gas, that's 14 parts of air, 14.7 parts of air, I should say, to one part of fuel. So there's a lot of air and there's one part of fuel. For ED5, there's less air for each part of fuel, mainly because oxygen is inside of the fuel now. So that changes everything. You need to add a lot more fuel to your engine because if you don't add a lot more fuel, your engine will have too much air in its mixture since oxygen is in the fuel. Hopefully that makes sense. That's really the main difference with regards to converting your car to E5. And that's mainly because due to the extra fuel that the system now requires, you need to upgrade your fuel pump, your fuel lines, and your injectors to support it. First, let's talk about the fuel pump. You're going to probably need something that's higher flow to support the 30% or more extra fuel. Usually it ends up being about 42 or even more extra fuel with 85. 85 specific fuel pumps are also available just to work better with the chemistry of E85. One of those being the AEM 320 pound fuel pump. One interesting thing is, for example, on my Mustang, I have a Warlboro 255. I actually put one in my Civic with a K-Swap as well. And the Warlboro 255 is a super popular pump for performance applications. Now, if you take the 255 and add 30% to it, you get about 330. So when it comes to 85, I would say like a 320 pound pump would be like your go-to for like average uh, horsepower numbers. Obviously, to be safe, you can just take whatever pump you currently have in your car and add 30%. So for higher horsepower cars, you might even need a dual pump setup or a super high flow pump. Let's talk about fuel lines. So this is a chart I just pulled from Summit. And this seems to be, you know, somewhat realistic with what I see online. Now keep in mind, this is just a recommended. You could probably... You know, you could, you might be able to make 400 horsepower on a 516 inch line, but obviously, optimally, you would have DAS 6AN just to make sure your system can flow enough, and you never want to risk leaning out. And basically, if your tuner is adding fuel to your fuel tables, 
and your car is not getting richer, then that basically means that you've maxed out your stock fuel lines, fuel pump, or your injectors. So even if you don't upgrade this stuff and you go to get a tune, your tuner's gonna know right away, hey, your fuel system can't support you know, the power that you're trying to make, and then you can go back and upgrade it. But it's better to err on the side of caution and just make sure that you follow something like this or that you consult with other people with the same car as you in the horsepower numbers that you're shooting for and see what they're running. And then you should be able to figure out uh, what to do. There's Obviously, there's tons of information online. Last is injectors. Same thing with the fuel pump, 30% more flow. So 600cc plus 30%, 780cc. Now keep in mind, I would once again, err on the side of caution and just go bigger. You're not really gonna have any downsides to super big injectors, especially if you're running sequential fueling, but talk to your tuner and just make sure that you know your car will have the correct injector size. Now one thing to note, injector duty cycle, that's essentially how hard your injectors are working, I wanna say, and that's like a percentage base. So if you're at a 600cc injector and you're running 93 octane and your injectors are like 100% duty cycle, you probably wanna go way bigger just to make sure that you're not gonna lean out your engine and that your injectors can flow. So once again, either log that yourself, cruising around doing some pools, or talk to your tuner and they should be able to advise you on that. So that's pretty much all you need to do to your car. It's not that complicated, it's just the fuel system because E85 requires that you know more fueling, usually it ends up being like 42, 45%. Because of that, you need to upgrade your fuel system. It's not rocket science. Let's get into the tuning part of it. So one thing before I actually talk about tuning methodologies for 85, a flex fuel sensor is probably something that you want to run, mainly because 85 at the pump is not guaranteed. It can range between like 50 or 60 up to 85%. You can use a flex fuel sensor in order to measure the exact percentage of the ethanol. With the flex fuel sensor, you would put this sensor in your return line some kits actually have a gauge and that can be helpful just you know so you can monitor it similar to how you would monitor like an AFR gauge and then you would run a wire to your ECU so that your ECU can then measure the flex fuel percentage and tune accordingly. There's two ways to do that tuning either percentage based or table blend and obviously there's other solutions here for tuning I just want to cover these two specific solutions because these two solutions assume that you still want to retain the functionality to run gasoline. So for example, if you run out of ethanol and you can't get any in the area that you're at, you could fill your tank up with gasoline. Or you could mix between the two, like you could have a half tank of gasoline and a half tank of ethanol, and your tune would work just fine. Your tune will be able to handle that because your tune can read the ethanol content of the ethanol sensor and adjust everything accordingly. So with that being said, percentage base is basically if your sensor is detecting 85%, 85, you can then add you know, a specified percentage of fuel or ignition timing or boost in your tune. Then you can also say, you know, if, if 55%, 85, then you would want to add less you know, fuel, ignition, or boost. And there's various other parameters as well. Table blend would basically be if you have an 85 table you have a gasoline table in your tune, and then you would blend between the two based on the ethanol percentage. So to make this a little more interesting, let's take a look at both of these methods. Okay, so first we're gonna take a look at a percentage-based tuning method for tuning your car with 85. And this is actually what Hondata uses. This is the tuning software that's used to tune my K-swapped 1995 Civic. So I'm just gonna start a new calibration right here and I'll just do the stock TSX. And then if we go to parameters, there is a flex fuel section. And in this section, you can see that you can enable ethanol input. And essentially that allows your ECU to read an ethanol sensor. These two parameters are used to tune the ethanol sensor. You can tune how fast the ECU responds to the sensor. And then if you wanna shut the sensor off, for higher RPMs because maybe the sensor can't keep up. But if you look at all of the tuning, you can see that based on the ethanol content, so 10%, 35% ethanol, 60, all the way up to 100, you can set an additional fueling compensation. So at 85% ethanol, you can add 42% fuel, and you can change this to however you want. Obviously, you would need to have 
your car tuned in order to get these all set up correctly. You also have ignition down here, so you can add ignition timing based on the ethanol. And at the very bottom, you can add additional boost pressure based on the ethanol. So this is percentage based. This is very uh, capable and very good for ethanol E85 tuning. It allows you to run obviously any percentage, it allows you to run 93 octane, and then based on the ethanol sensor, your ECU will automatically adjust accordingly. So this is a very good method, but let's jump over to table blend and check that out as well. Let's take a look at a table blend method for tuning for E85. And this is Tuner Studio. This is what I use to tune my Mustang. And as you can see, I only have one fuel table here in Tuner Studio. Now, if I go over to table choices, I have an option for dual fuel. So I can turn dual fuel on and I can set it to flex blend. You can also set it to table switch, but I'm gonna set it to flex blend because I would like to have a flex fuel sensor determine the amount of blending that I do. And here you can set up all the additional tables. So example, if I wanna have an alternate fuel table, I can turn that to on. And now when I go over to fuel settings, you'll see that I have an additional fuel table. Tuner Studio can blend between these two in order to provide the correct amount of fuel depending on your ethanol content. Now I can also do the same for Spark. So if I go to Spark, I now have an additional ignition table. I can do the same for air fuel ratio. I can do an additional air fuel ratio table so that I can set my target A fuel, air fuel ratios different for flex fuel. For example, I could run a little leaner on flex fuel to try to make some more power or something like that. So this is an example of dual table mode. You would have to essentially tune both these tables. Ideally, you would tune your gas a lean table and then you would tune your 85 table with like 85% ethanol. So that way, anything in between could be interpolated by Tuner Studio. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that quick explanation of E85 and how you could probably convert your car to E85. Obviously I'm no expert, but I'm trying to learn a lot and I wanna share that knowledge with you. Hopefully in the future here, we'll be able to do an E85 conversion on the Mustang and I'll be able to document that process. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think and if you've converted your car to E5 if you want to. Well, I would love to hear about it and I'll see you in the next video.